Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm James. I'm a third year medical student studying at Liverpool University. And today we're just going to look through what life is like as a medical student from years one to three if you come to Liverpool. And the first thing to mention is that every medical school is slightly different in the way that they uh, give their course, uh, but the outcome's the same. So you're always, all medical students who study at any university always become a doctor. So the first thing you should be considering is what the course is like and which one and which sort of study style suits you. For example, uh, places like Cambridge, uh, Oxford have their traditional system where they do a sort of pre-clinical year of uh, one to three. So that no clinical exposure there and then it will be after you've learned all your content, you then go into the hospital and apply your knowledge. In Liverpool, it's called a spiral curriculum and therefore what that means is you have a clinical exposure from the first year, it's not much, so a week I think, uh, and then that increases as you go up and also you, you keep revisiting the content over and over again from the different years. And so this video will just be looking at the different stages, so how each year you approach things like anatomy, physiology, pathophysiology, something called a population perspective or global health. Um, and then also things like clinical skills, OSCEs, how things are assessed in each year, what there is to do at Liverpool, and all those different things. So I'll put a sort of timestamp in the description below about what is basically here at Liverpool. Okay, so the first thing to talk about is anatomy. And this is basically the study of what's in the body in terms of the organs, the vasculature, the bones, and things like that, where everything sits. And in first year, this is a quite a large proportion of your study content, we have things called Heart Human Anatomy Resource Centre, which is essentially you go into some room for two hours, three hours, um, and look at the different pro sections. These are bits of body which have been cut up and dissected for you, um, and you sort of go through different types of system, and then there's body parts for that system. So you can see it as it would be on a person um, in sort of different cut out bits. There's all things like quizzes and and different questions to answer as you go around each of the different stations. And personally, those Hark sessions do need a bit of improvement because they have just questions and there wasn't, and in first year anyway, there wasn't enough teaching. So there's only one supervisor for the whole group and that needs to be improved. But the actual pro sections I was really quite impressed with, they were already done for you. And so all you need to do is sort of look at it and you can see it really well, as opposed to there being loads of fat and loads of excess tissue there that you have to dissect if you're doing something like a whole body dissection. So there's pros and cons of each of those. To supplement those, we had Hark lectures. So these would just literally cover anatomy. And these were pretty bulky lectures. They would have a lot of information covered in those. And it can be from, I don't know, upper limb anatomy. and it's surprising how many different muscles, vasculature, nerve supply that you have to learn and each of the different functions, the insertion points for the different muscles of the arm, for example. But yeah, it's quite, it's quite a lot. Anyway, in second year, that continues. So you still have your heart sessions and that's the final year. You don't get any more anatomy teaching at Liverpool after that time um, that's actually sort of scheduled for you. You have the heart sessions and then they stop after the second year. You, we don't have any in the third year and for the end of the course you don't really sort of continue it again. I think the note about anatomy as well is that lots of people tend to uh, want to buy the textbook. <laughs> I wanted to buy the Grey's Anatomy textbook and currently it's only used for my desk and sort of monitor stand and I really never really used it. What is worth buying is the uh, flashcards, so Grey's and Netters both do flashcards which are pretty good and they sort of, if you learn all of those you'll have a very very good understanding of all the anatomy of the body um, so yeah definitely worth buying those but you can also get those second hand when you come into the uni so don't buy them beforehand there'll be sort of facebook websites and facebook groups and people trying to sell their old anatomy flashcards which are a lot cheaper than buying them brand new so worth doing that if you want to get sort of a head start there before uni starts or just as, as the course progresses so physiology is the next part and the physiology is basically how the body works and how different parts of the body work. And mainly, this is first year. First year in Liverpool, you do physiology. And all your thing, all your lectures are based on how does the body function normally? So, I don't know, how does the thyroid produce its T3 and T4 hormone? Or how does this receptor, G-protein coupled receptor work? Or how does this tyrosine kinase receptor work for insulin? So there's lots of these different things you have to learn and there's a lot of content there. And like I said, this is a spiral curriculum. So you will come back to physiology again 
in second year, third year. As you, as you continue, obviously you always use that knowledge. It's just sort of honing what you actually need for your sort of clinically based stuff as you get sort of progress. Next, we'll come on to pathophysiology. And this is basically second year. So first year we do physiology. Second year, we mainly focus on pathophysiology, i.e. when the body goes wrong. And this can be you know, literally every, in second year you actually do lots of the conditions, basically every single condition that goes wrong with the body, besides things like dermatology, obstetrics, and a couple of niche other things. But there's a lot of stuff that you have to still learn for that section. Uh, and you cover basically everything of the common conditions, of uh, like the pathophysiology, how it goes wrong from the normal, and what the symptoms are, and a couple of the investigations that you do. Uh, but it's mainly symptoms and investigations. And so there's a lot of content in the second year, and you, you have to be doing quite a lot of work in those first two years to sort of get a really good base understanding that you can then, again, build up upon as you go up the years. In the third year, we do some more. So we do things like dermatology, obstetrics, and you mainly focused on different types of things like surgical and medical. And then you've got obs and gynae, GP and peds. And those are sort of big group sections Then you have within that the different sections and you, again, you do still learn extra bits that you need to learn, but the majority of the stuff you would have learned prior. And you... <laughs> Next, pharmacology, study of drugs and what they do. Um, in first year, you don't really learn that much. They don't give you that much stuff to do with pharmacology. You're still trying to learn the basic stuff. They'll do give you a few bits and bits and bobs in terms of the uh, receptors and things like I mentioned. Second year, you get to start to learn a few of the basic things like your asthma treatments, your uh, anticoagulation therapies, your things for COPD, lots of the common things, hypertensive uh, treatments, how to manage those sort of things. In third year, you then go into more complicated stuff, so things like your type 2 diabetic treatments, with all these different drugs and how they work, and some of the common side effects of those. So it's, it, it sort of steps up, and you have to know the mechanism behind it, and lots of these new words, which seems like a new language when you start doing it as well. But the more you do it, the more you become a, a sort of familiar with them as well. So as I said, this goes up and in third year, you're really trying to learn the treatment. So with the pharmacology, that's the, that's the main thing. So you're trying to do your, how it goes, how it works normally, the pathophysiology, how it goes wrong, and then the investigation of the treatment and those sort of things that you're sort of building up as you go along. Now I have mentioned it before, there's something called population's perspective or global health which I was never a massive fan of in first and second year. It didn't really seem like it was appropriate to what I was learning. It was nothing to do with science. It's just, oh, how do you do a screening program? Or how does some of the Wilson Jugger criteria for screening? Or how to do a, a research project that, that I didn't really think was very, that's not medicine, that's not what I signed up for. However, as the years go on, you realize it's a really big part of your work as a doctor where you start doing research projects and things like that. And there's another part that we can talk about, about research and how Liverpool medical students are able to sort of uh, learn that, that aspect. But population perspective is just learn a list of terms that you cook up in your exam. There's a, about 10 marks in your end of year exam that is dedicated to it. So it's just something you have to learn and, and sort of get, get through the exam. Then we have something called CBL. So CBL is a case-based learning. And this is, as it says on the tin really, case so how, if someone, present, uh, someone presents with this, this, this and this, what should you do, what questions should you ask and things like that. In the first year, it's a quite complicated because you're learning just the normal stuff. And so there isn't really many things that you can ask. Um, it's good to sort of get an idea and start having an, an, uh, an idea of your pathophysiology. In second year, again, it's, it is good. But in third year, this is where it's really important. It's, you really learn a lot from them uh, and you get presented with a case and have to um, see what you'd have to do and in in first and second year what they do is they want you to prepare the questions so write the answers to the questions for all the different cases you then meet in small groups uh, of about seven or eight people discuss the answers edit your answers and then in the next week there's a big or a large group CBL where there's a doctor or equivalent taking the session and you aren't allowed your notes so you have to sort of learn the stuff and then you have to go through the questions and, and he or she picks on you and, and, ask, and asks you the questions for it. So it's quite nerve wracking at first and uh, I remember being quite scared for those, but you get used to it after a couple of sessions and it's quite, it's quite actually quite useful. Uh, 
we also have something called clinical skills. These are things that you, you do day to day in the hospital. So things like your respiratory exam, tapping, how to cuss, how to listen with a stethoscope and all those sort of things. Uh, and in first year you do things like washing your hands, how to take a history. In second year it's a bit more a bit more useful, so they might go over a neuro exam or the cranial nerve exam and how to test if these nerves are working. In third year, it's more specific to what placement you're going on. So say I was doing I was doing obstetrics and gynaecology for my first placement, and I got given the uh, palpation of the fetus in the womb. And so you have to sort of fake plastic people that you have to try to feel where the baby is and the orientation of their the pinard or listening to their heart. I think that they got things like venipuncture, genital exams, uh, into muscular injections and you practice all those before once you've done it once in, in clinical school you can do it on patients so it's, it's quite a quick turnaround and this is going to prepare you for your OSCEs which are your sort of practical based exam that you do uh, well you, we should have done it in the second year but with Covid they cancelled it so we'll have it this year but if you're in starting medical school then usually you'll have a, a OSCE in, in uh, second year and third year and they continue as you go up uh, we have a research paper that we have to do and they prepare you, the uni give you uh, teaching on how to use the academic uh, websites and search different academic papers, how to reference properly, how to uh, write a systematic review, how to structure everything and you get all that teaching and then as you go up you, you sort of build on that research project, you have one and you can do another one which you have to do a bit more work for and then it keeps going on as you go up and you'll be you'll find that that's actually really really helpful because in when you start doing your uh, foundation jobs and, and go higher up in order to be a bit more competitive you'd want to have a bit more research behind your belt to say oh look i'm dedicated to this field of work say and i've got xyz that i've i've, I've written or, or presented at a conference or or um, published if you're lucky enough to get one of those and so that's going to give you a bit more of an edge when you're thinking about getting a job. So maybe start thinking about that towards the third year when you can actually do some of the other research bits and you're a bit more used to doing it. But Liverpool does prepare you quite well for that with the different teaching sessions that they put on. Now placement. So placement, uh, as I said, builds up as you go along. So first, first year is about a week or a day, I can't remember to be honest. In, in second year, it's six weeks. So you have one hospital, you go there every so often for a week. In, um, yeah, so you have four weeks of lectures and then a week of placement, and then that sort of cycle uh, continues. In third year, it's where I am now, you have four weeks of placement and then one week of lectures. And so it's very much placement based, and you get all your teaching through your placement and all your different things like that. So it's really important to sort of um, learn as much as you can from placement and, and get that. And you rotate around different hospitals as well, which are all around the Merseyside region and often quite specialist centres. And we have some, something called uh, CCT. Um, and pre-placement sessions that sort of prepare you for your for your placement work and something called ccp which is your communication to clinical practice which is oh can you talk to a patient and do you have any communication skills and they teach us how, how to talk to a patient and the things to say things not to say how to introduce yourself and there's a few different sessions of that in first and second year and and then one basically in third year as well which is important now for assessments and in first year, we have end of blocks. So within each block, say respiratory, cardiology, genetics, all these other things, you, ha you have a, at the end of those, you have an end of block test, which is about 30 questions of multiple choice, all multiple choice questions online. And these, uh, you get a mark at the end. They don't count to anything. They don't, it's sort of based on anything. But the, the thing is, is that you could finish the content on, say, a Tuesday, and the test would always be on a Wednesday. So the worst one I had was that I had a lecture on the Wednesday and the test was on the Wednesday so new content could be on the test on the day of the test so what that means is that you have to keep revising as you go along so you do a lecture you type up the notes you start revising the content so that you can know it for the end of block test which is a lot a lot of work but it does help you a lot when you're trying to learn the stuff for that end of year exam and you've already done the revision for all of these different blocks so you're going over it again uh, which is quite handy there's something called formatives, which are essentially mocks, and those are after Christmas usually, and they give you an idea about what it could be like in the actual end of year exam. And the end of year exam, or the summative, uh, this is two exams, usually, and uh, on everything you've done. So in first year, it'll be everything you've done in first year. In second year, they could ask you from anything in first year and second year. 
third year it'll be anything from first, second or third. Um, but that it'll be the, the 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 questions will be more tailored towards the year that you're at. So they wouldn't ask me a really niche thing about certain types of receptors um, and how they individually function like I could have had in first year. Um, they could do, but it would be very harsh. Um, so, so you have to tailor it to this sort of type of medicine that you're doing. This When you get to third year, it's more clinically based. So things like treatment and stuff like that. And these summatives are quite important because these are to do with F pass points, which are points that determine where you go in the country in F1 and F2. And F pass, uh, I don't know if anyone knows, but you get ranked at the end of medical school from all the different medical schools and you choose which area of the UK you want to go in your hospital. The better you do, the more likely you are to get your chosen place. Some are more, more competitive than others. Uh, so London, for example, is very competitive. To get In order to get into London, you have to do very well ranked in the country. Um, and then likewise, other places probably won't be as competitive. And so these end of, these, uh, end of year exams all contribute a little bit from, from second year, all have a little bit of contribution towards those F pass points that you get at the end. Um, things like your research projects, your publications, um, those, uh, they, well, they've just recently changed it. They, they used to be um, sort of count towards it, but also now this would be useful for your uh, actual job and your training that you want to go on the training pathway that you need. And finally, the things that people should actually con uh, consider as well is the extra things. So the societies, the sports teams, the bits, bits of social things that are going on. And in Liverpool, they have a lot of variety of societies, as with any uni, I guess, and think and lots of good different sports teams. So the medical school have their own sports teams. So I'll, I'm in the rugby team and the, the football team. Or I mean, There's quite a sort of social thing as well. They'll have sort of social things going on. And I've tried out lots of different sports as well. So you just you can sort of choose as and when to do those. There's also the, the medical society, uh, Liverpool Medical School Society. They put on events like annual ball, annual dinner, men's dinner, um, and then other charity events as well that get put on throughout the year. So there's a lot of, there's a big calendar, but this is last year's calendar uh, that you can see here. You can see there's a lot of stuff that's going on, um, like your Christmas events as well, and Christmas ski trip. So that is a, hopefully a, a good comprehensive overview about what you can expect in the first one to three years if you come here to Liverpool Uni. If you have any questions about any of those different parts, send it in the comments or send me a message and I can get back to you about exactly what sort of happens in those different years and any advice that you I have if you're looking to study medicine at Liverpool. Uh, I hope that helps and I hope that you make the correct decision about which uni you want to go to. See you again.